In the previous series of videos we dived into Istio and whilst I was avoiding going into any deep detail we were able to exploit Istio to diagnose a tricky problem and come up with at least a temporary workaround. But I was avoiding going into detail and I know that many of you on this course do need deeper information about the inner workings of Istio. So in this section we're going to have a look in a little bit more detail at that control plane and the data plane. And we've got quite a few jargon terms to get through here. We're going to be looking at what Envoy is, and we'll also get details on the mysteriously named control plane components such as Mixer, Pilot, Citadel, and Galley. And we'll start in this video by looking at what I think is by far the most important aspect of Istio, and that is the proxies. So if I can recap from the previous video as quickly as possible, uh, Istio is an example of a service mesh and whilst there's a million different ways of implementing service meshes, the way that Istio does things is by taking all of the pods that we're running in a particular namespace, you know now we can label namespaces to make Istio work for that namespace, but for a particular namespace, Istio is going to automatically inject a so-called proxy into each of the pods in that namespace. An alternative term for this proxy is the sidecar. Sidecar is a more generic term that means a helper container alongside a main container. But when you're working in Istio, if you hear the word sidecar, then we're probably talking about the proxies. Now, in the next video, I'm going to look at how that proxy is implemented, and I'm going to introduce you to something called Envoy. But before I dive into that, I realise that some of you might not have come across the term proxy before, or at least you may have heard the term proxy all over the place, but not be quite sure what that term really means. It is, after all, quite a jargon term. So if that's you and you're confused by the word proxy, then I'm going to complete this video by giving you background to where the concept of a proxy comes from in software generally. If you already know about the general concept of a proxy, then feel free to move to the next video. Now, if you're still with me, the rest of this video is to try to demystify the jargon term proxy. This is such a wonderful concept. It appears all over software. And as you've, and as you've already seen, proxies really form the backbone of Istio. So let's forget Istio for this video. I'm just going to talk about proxies in general. Let's go through a really simple example. We have a setup here where we have some kind of software component. I don't know what that component is. It could be a class in a programming language. It could be a module. It could be uh, a web browser. It could, of course, be a Docker container or a Kubernetes pod. It really doesn't matter what it is. And similarly, we have a sort of server component. Again, a class, a function, a web server or a Docker container. It really doesn't matter what it is, but it has some functionality inside it that we want to call. I've written it here a bit like a programming language method but it could be a REST endpoint or whatever. So the client wants to call this and get all of the customers for a system. And of course that will be returned back to the client. All very simple. We want to add some extra logic to this process flow. And I'll go for a nice simple one. We want to ensure that the client has logged in and has the required level of credentials so that they have the privileges to actually call this method. So a nice simple scenario. Now, how could we implement that? Well, given that we've only got two components so far, if we look at, could we, could we implement the, is this user logged in with the right credentials? Could we implement that inside this get all customers function? Uh, yeah, well, I hope you'll agree that would be a really bad idea because get all customers should just be getting customers. It shouldn't be implementing security logic. Uh, it would be horrible because we'd need to copy and paste that security logic across the whole of the rest of this component and probably all of the other components in the system as well. And it would just be really messy. Uh, it would be even worse probably though if we put that logic here in the client um, because 
you know, a client really shouldn't be validating whether it's logged in or not. That would be a recipe for disaster. So I've, di I've, so I've dismissed there quite quickly the possibility of implementing the logic here or here. I guess you could argue that we could add extra methods inside this component that just do security, but I think all of my arguments against that still apply. Uh, customer management should just be managing customers. It shouldn't be implementing security. I hope you will agree with me that we need some kind of extra components here. And it feels like the components probably going to sit somewhere here in the middle between the clients and the, I really need a name for this sort of server component. So I'm going to keep calling this the target. That's the thing that we're actually trying to call. It's our aim to call this from the client. So let's have a look at how that could work. We could implement some kind of component in the middle, maybe. And my first thought is perhaps we could have a is user logged in function. This doesn't really feel very good either, because with that, the client's going to have to manually call is this user logged in before then presumably they do a second step of calling get all customers on the target. That's nasty because the client's very likely to forget to call is user logged in. We want this to be automatic. We want it to be part of the process that we had before. I suppose another way would be you could implement the is user logged in as check the users logged in and if they are, then proceed to the target which uh, I suppose is a bit better than what I said before, but the clients having to call this function is user logged in. Again, the client shouldn't need to be doing that check. It shouldn't even need to know about the security process. If the user's logged in, they should be able to call get all customers. If they're not logged in, when they call get all customers, they should get an error. I can finally now get to the point the way that this is usually implemented is we'll have an entire component sitting in between the client and the target. Now, for now, I'm going to call this the security checker component, which is a bit clunky and I definitely need to fix that in a short while. But here's the clever part of this plan. We know we want to ultimately call the get all customers function, routine, method or endpoint. What we're going to do in this security checker component is we're going to mirror all of the methods, all of the operations that we can do in the target are going to be replicated in the security checker. So we've just got one here, but if there were 10 routines in here, then we'd have 10 routines all mirrored here in the security checker. And the beauty of that is, if we can arrange things so that the client calls the security checker instead of the target directly. Now, that's a big if, and I will need to come back and talk in a bit more detail about that. But if that's possible, then, if we can arrange that, then the client's just doing exactly what it was doing before. It's calling get all customers on some kind of server component. And we could put into here, well, we'd probably implemented it as a separate operation in this component, but we could have a routine in there which says, is the user logged in? Now, notice the big difference the client can't see is user logged in, they have no visibility of that. They've just made the same call they were making before. So the logic of is user logged in could be, yep, if they're logged in, just return OK, back to get all customers. And then the next magical part is the, fun is the operation here is simply implemented as we will proceed to the target. So the implementation actually of this function here, this operation in the middle is really straightforward. We just call this custom logic and then if we're happy, we call the target logic. So very trivial implementation here and we just need, and we just need to have our complex security logic in a function, a method of its own. 
if the user wasn't logged in and this returned false, we could have thrown an exception or returned a HTTP 500 or 403 or whatever. We could return an error back to the client without the target ever being called. The, the really elegant part of this is that this component in the middle has exactly the same functions, routines and operations as the target, but is also able to implement some extra logic. I need to improve this shortly, but I think it's time to give you the jargon. You know that this video is all about proxies, and I can now reveal that this component in the middle is called a proxy. I think one of the reasons why I've produced this sort of extra bonus video on the course is that I know a lot of people just find the term proxy a little bit weird and strange. Perhaps it's not a term that we use all that often in normal day-to-day -day language. I've just Googled for the word proxy and probably because Google knows I'm a techie, I, I have got an endless list of proxy results for software. But if I go for proxy uh, definition, the, the dictionary definition of the word is that a proxy is where somebody in the real world has the authority to represent somebody else. So I will often use the word stand-in as well. And that's what we have here. This security checker was acting as a stand-in for the target. And you always know you're talking about a proxy in software if the interface, in other words, the operation supported on the proxy are identical to the operations supported on the target. You might be aware that there was a very popular book written, goodness, back in the 1990s called Design Patterns, which for a long while was considered one of the greatest works in software, especially if you were into object-oriented software. And one of the 23 patterns in there, I think, was the proxy pattern. I'm sure the concept goes back earlier than the Gang of Four, but certainly they catalogued the idea and possibly popularized it. So that's where the jargon term proxy comes from. Just before I finish this picture, we wouldn't normally implement things like this. The security checker proxy here is doing too much. Really, the proxy should just be doing the standing work. Typically, we would implement this by having the proxy just being the operations, and we would have some kind of separate component that does the actual logic that the proxy wants to call. I wasn't quite sure what to call this component, so I'm going to go for this is the proxy logic. So we'd have the check, the user login check in there. So let me just recap then on this structure, and the really critical part of this is the client is just making the usual call that they were making before. The client has not had to do anything particularly special. They're still calling get all customers. The actual pro proxy logic is invisible to the client. It's called in the background by the proxy. And then if, if the proxy chooses to do so, the proxy can choose to go ahead and go on to call the target logic. I say if because the proxy might decide, no, this user's not allowed to call that logic, so we'll throw back an error. Also, I should mention that this proxy logic can be run before the target gets called, or it could be run after the target got called. So it might be that this target returns some results back to the proxy, and then the proxy calls some proxy logic to modify those results in some way before returning it back. And you can do a combination of the two. We could do some proxy logic before the target, then call the target, and then do some further proxy logic after the target. Now, the last thing to say about this, and there's one little bit of detail that I've been sort of hiding under the carpet, Ideally, we want the clients to not know that they are calling a proxy. But to actually make that happen, we do have to do some clever tricks. And it depends entirely on your programming language or whatever framework you're using as to what that trick is. For example, in the Java programming language, we have a wonderful 
feature in Java. It, it really is one of the key features of Java that this proxy in red can be automatically generated by Java and can be automatically injected into the client without the client knowing they've been given a proxy which is absolutely fantastic and they're called dynamic proxies in Java they do come at a cost of a slight performance penalty but we often don't care about that and the fact that we can just slip them in without the client knowing is absolutely wonderful if any of you have worked in Spring either Spring Framework or Spring Boot Spring use proxies everywhere particularly for security just like I've described here but also in transaction management for databases and that kind of thing and they do lots of clever tricks with their container to give clients instances of the proxy rather than instances of the target but the client doesn't know that and that's probably one of Spring's main features but I realize many of you will be on this course from a wide variety of different languages and frameworks have a look around for yourself to see how proxies are implemented for you that's just a bit of background then to demystify the term proxy but you're here for Istio of course and you know from the previous demonstrations that we have these proxies in Istio so just to round off this video although it might look slightly different it's really exactly what I've just been describing we have a container here that wants to con call a container over here the container thinks they're calling the target container here but they aren't they're being rerouted or rerouted through this proxy the only complexity is that there's also a proxy on the target side as well now that is quite complicated and I'm certainly not going to worry about that on this course the point is this proxy can intervene and we saw that there's a lot of things that the Istio proxies can implement such as telemetry and traffic management but whatever it is that these proxies are doing they are just implementing the standard software pattern of proxies and you're going to find them everywhere. I absolutely love proxies. So I hope that's demystified proxies. In the next video, we'll get back on track and I'll talk about exactly where these Istio proxies come from.